Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, technically this is a remake of one of my past tutorials, which I covered how to make accessories such as um, harnesses and chokers, things like that. Um, I've learned a few things since then, as well as I was having a lot of um, comments made on my older tutorials where people were having uh, issues hearing me with my mic volume um, and other users were not having the issue so it seemed pretty sporadic. Um, since then I've gotten a new mic and I've also um, played around with the mic volume so I wanted to make some new videos so that hopefully the mic sound is better as well as um, to inform you guys of the new things that I learned to hopefully help out with y'all's um, creations. So um, today we're gonna be of recovering what um, the old tutorial was which is making chains and harnesses things like that um, in today's tutorial i'm actually going to cover how i made one of my free harnesses as well as how i make my chains um, this can be applied to earrings jewelry obviously like i said harnesses garters necklaces chokers anything pretty much that you um, want to make it in, in that kind of style so there's a few different things we're going to cover today um, i'll do my best to keep it short um, and like i said the process pretty much applies to a wide variety of things that you might be wanting to make. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first things first, before I forget, I will always do my best to tell you guys what shortcut keys and buttons I'm pushing, um, but in case I forget, I do have my shape keys turned on, um, or sorry, my screencast keys turned on down here in the bottom left hand corner, so you can keep an eye on that if I forget. Um, so to get started, I'm going to start with making a harness. So. Uh, when I made my free one, I did it as a plane. Uh, it's really up to you if you want to do it as a plane or a cube. Plane uh, is more 2D instead of 3D. So today I'm actually going to go ahead and do a cube so that it is a little bit more 3D and has some thickness to it. So I'm just shrinking this down, making this a little bit more flat so that it's not quite so thick. And size isn't necessarily um, important right now because it's something we can always mess with later. So, um, I will cover how to make um, things on a circle, uh, and we'll also cover how to make chains since that's going to be a little bit different. But for right now, since we're going to do a harness, I'm going to use a path today. And also just shrinking this down so that it's not taking up the whole screen. So uh, for starters, you're going to want to click on your cube or plane, whatever it is that you've selected. You're going to come over to your modifiers, and we're going to add a few. Uh, first one that we're going to add is curve. I'm going to select our thing there and as you can see it kind of it's a bit difficult to see but it did kick it off to more of the the front. If for some reason it doesn't you can always just move it over. And then um, and also you can change the deform axis so like if you want it flipped you know like a specific way or something you can you can do that. Right now I'm just going to leave it as the x-axis. Um, and then we're also going to add an array modifier. Um, and this, again, you can play with these offsets to kind of get, so like, this is something we'll cover more whenever we do chains. We'll, we'll do an offset um, to kind of space out the chains. But for this, I do want them touching, uh, since we're going to be making one uh, fluid harness. So I'm not going to mess with the, the offsets too much. You can up the count, obviously, to, you know, whatever you want it to be. Right now I'm just going to do a few to kind of cover that plane. Something important here is it does matter the order of your um, modifiers. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down a little bit so I can up this a little bit more. So for right now, like if we were to... No, there it goes. Right, if we go to mess with our path, it's going to kind of break up the the planes like this, which might be cool if you're doing something like a, you know, like a shingled look or like scaling or something, but if you want it to be smooth, um, the reason it's doing that is because it's not the first modifier. So you'll want to go back to your plane. It's kind of hard to see, but there are little dots here, and just drag that up above the curve, and now it, it'll stay smooth until you start like going crazy with it, and then it's going to show more like divoted like that and that's simply just because of the um, amount. It's kind of like thinking of it as like a low poly thing. It's not very high poly so it's going to do that. And that's okay. That's something we can mess with. So I'm going to shift select both. Bring it up here. I'm going to go into our front view. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. No. 
Mew! Clicking all the wrong buttons. Okay, and X. Okay. Nope. He's always clicking all the wrong things. <laughs> I apologize. So, I'm just going to get it kind of front facing. And. Let's kind of start here. We're going to make like a, a really quick little harness here. So as you can see, if you go into edit mode while you're clicked on um, like just this, it's going to edit the planes themselves, which can be helpful if you want to, you know, again, like if you want to play with how it looks, depending on what you're wanting to do. Like if you want more of like a jagged for like a choker or something. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. That is how you can play with the shape. But if you want to play with where it's at, you'll want to click on your path and go into edit mode. Um, this kind of acts a lot the same way as making hair, you know, alt S to scale, uh, regular S can make your whole plane bigger. Um, control T to twist. Um, so just keep that in mind as well as if you ever need, so like, let's say we come down here and we start kind of like shaping this out, right? Well, your plane's not going that way. Well, that's because the ray is only set to 7. So if you up that, it will follow out that plane. Um, so it's kind of up to you if you want to mess with the plane first or if you want to mess with the ray count first and then adjust the plane where you want it to be. And what I'm using here is just the um, proportional editing. And I'm using E to extrude and just kind of like shape it out. Now if you do E this way, right, that is going to kind of mess it up because it's not technically supposed to do that. So what you could do, select there, not too sure, it might not be Anyways, the point is you can eventually do a mirror modifier as to if it's best done before or after um, you kind of get it all situated is up to you, but oops. Now on that, I would probably turn on clipping so that it'll help with things like this here in the middle. Going back to my plane. So it'll kind of unite those, but actually, let's do something like that. I think that's kind of cool. And you can always um, come through on this and, you know, you can always subdivide it, make it a little bit more um, higher poly. And then you can just kind of start building it out um, from here. Now, do be aware of what vertices um, that you're selecting. So that you don't accidentally select the wrong one. And again, this is where it's really up to you at this point on if you would rather um, kind of mess with the, the pathing first and then fix your array, or if you want to do it at the same time. I personally prefer to do it at the same time, so I can keep an eye on it. So yeah, that's how you could go through and you can start um, kind of editing your, um, your harness there. Now it is overlapping here, which isn't something that I quite want. So that's when it might be fine to um, go ahead and wait on that mirror modifier and um, apply it after the fact. So let's say, you know, you have your harness all done. Let's just say this is, you know, this is what you wanted it to be. So you're going to apply as you go so that now if you edit, that path isn't something you can edit anymore. It's not going to affect um, your, your harness here. And then you could come in here and you could do, whoops, that's right, you could do subdivide, but I would probably subdivide beforehand, but if you're doing something like, um, 
like a pearl necklace or something that might be really cool it's just kind of something you you kind of want to play around with um depending on what you're wanting to make in the order that you do things but anyways so then you can come in here do mirror and then probably do clipping and then i would personally come through and kind of adjust these guys to make sure that they are merged properly and see now there's not that overlap anymore and then you could you know you have your harness obviously this one's not finished or anything but um just kind of there as an example so um that's how i personally make harnesses same thing pretty much applies for anything chain related so for chains let's go ahead and add a torus. I'm going to squish this down a little bit. And for this guy, got my x-ray turned on. I'm going to select hello, select half and separate by selection. Just be kind of safe about it and then delete. And I'm going to come back on here. And this is to make a chain. So I'm going to turn that off. Alt select and then shift alt and then select both of those. And then we can E to extrude and control to kind of lock it in place. All right. And then we can take this, add a mirror modifier. If you wanted to, you could do it that way. on clipping kind of get it set to the length that we like something like that shade smooth all right so now we've got the start of a chain so now what we can do is we're going to shift D duplicate oh, I always click the wrong ones and we're going to kind of get it, you know, you can have it touching as far out as you want, whatever. Kind of get it positioned where you want it to be. And then you're going to shift select them both and control. Oh. Make sure to apply your mirror modifier first. <laughs> Don't be like me and forget. And then control J. So uh, you got the start of your chain going. You can go ahead and add your array modifier if you want. It doesn't really matter what order. This is when the factors come into play. So you you can, you know, tone it down. You want to kind of get it to match up. So 0.8 is not quite where I want it. 0.85. Okay. Maybe 0.8. Well, that's a little bit more better. Okay. So, and then you can play with right how far out you want it to be uh, but the same thing we're going to go to curve and path and we're going to add a curve modifier set it there make sure it's kind of lined up and then we're going to play with our array and I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down All right, so then it's the exact same thing as it was on the harness you can take Shift select those, you can move them up, scale them down, do whatever you need to, and then you can take that path and you can start, you know, moving your chain however you want it to be. So, that's how you make your chains. Um, now, something that you can do is instead of doing it as a path, you could do like a circle. and then just line that up and then you can up your array not that high and something that I've run into before is if you ever have an issue where it doesn't like join nicely like that see like right there oh. Oh. it's not quite joining like I want you can always go in and edit that after um, right now again if you edit it's gonna snap off but once you apply your modifiers you can just go into edit mode and um, maybe like extend out this link a little bit 
Or if you absolutely need to, you could, you know, up it and then you could go and delete maybe like this middle one here or something. It's just kind of whatever works for you. But keep in mind, um, you can always, always, always edit after the fact. So then you could take this and, um, you know, you can make a little chain necklace or a halo or whatever you want because you can get it positioned and then it it's the same exact thing whoops as the path you can come through sorry it's kind of lagging I have a lot going on in this project you can come through right and you can start kind of like modifying it how you want it to be And keep in mind, as you can see, it's kind of overlapping now. Um, you're because the ray count is still there. It's not going to change while you're moving your path. Um, so you'll just want to go through and fix that array modifier so that it's not overlapping. Ta-da! Now you've made a necklace. So um, yeah, that's kind of the same premise, like I said, across the board for for things like accessories like this, um, especially whenever you're wanting to adjust it and move it. Um, you know, using a circle, using a path, whichever is easiest for you, and then your array modifier. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Quick little tutorial on how I personally make harnesses and chains, things like that. Um, and then if you have something that you're wanting to rig, like if you've made up earrings and you want to rig it, I do have a video up on how to rig and weight paint. In that video, um, I used hair as an example, but the premise is exactly the same. Um, there's not anything different. Um, just because the mesh is different, so you can check that out if you need to, but um, yeah, quick little easy way to make accessories. I hope this helped, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.